welcome to Level Up, a podcast for independent artists navigating the Asian music industry. I'm your host, Giselle Cole. I'm a music journalist, the founder of Platform Asian Pop Weekly, and an all-around Mandopop nerd. Join me in taking control of your career as an artist, and I'll show you how to make the most of it. Hi guys, and welcome back yet again to the Level Up podcast. I'm your host, Giselle Cole, and I'm very excited to be back. It's been quite a while since our last episode. Um, We just ended up getting really busy working on um, our radio show and all the projects last year, but as you may have seen on our social media, on Asian Power Weekly social media, uh, we have started to pivot towards all audio content this year so that we can have more time to continue the level up project because we think that um, helping independent artists navigate the Asian music industry is really important for the foundation um, of the entire industry and for exporting the music to other places as well. So yeah, that's why we're back and I'm really glad that I've gotten so much great feedback Um, for this podcast and I still continue to get it even though we haven't really been releasing episodes over the last few months so I was like yes we got to bring this back we got to continue to share um, more information about all the different um, parts of the independent music industry from my experiences and also hopefully some of our guests experiences moving forward but to start off with this new year, um, I wanted to start off small. Um, so I'm sharing this week, uh, actual, actually it's a recording from a webinar that I did last year with a mentorship program called Make Your Mark in Singapore. And as part of the mentorship program, I shared about my experiences with EPKs, which are electronic press kits. Uh, creating them, advising artists on how to create them, what should be included in them, what's the best way to create them so that you save yourself the hassle and why, especially why these EPKs are important for artists. So I'm not going to ramble too much, but I'm just going to put the recording right here, allow you guys to have a really hard and fast idea of all these different aspects, why it's important, and yeah. Enjoy our little segment. Hi, everyone. Thanks for giving up your Saturday to be here. As Christian mentioned just now, my name is Jocelle, and I'm the founder and head editor of media platform Asian Pop Weekly, which focuses on bringing Asian music to overseas audiences. And some of you may also know that I work as Believe as a label distribution leader for Singapore, Malaysia, and I also used to work with our Greater China team, specifically with the Taiwan team. So today I'm going to be talking about best practices for EPKs, and I think this is something that's very important for any independent an artist because as someone who works in both the media side and the distribution side, I'm sure Leland will also agree with me, I feel that EPK is a very, very important thing to help you guys to further your conversation, no matter is it with a distribution partner, is it with the DSPs, is it with like a media platform who might be interested in supporting you or any any other kind of partner. It's like the PDF or like the file that will actually maybe like be the next step like it'll be a stepping stone for you to like further that conversation so I think it's really important if you're able to get it right so let's just dive right in so basically we're going to go through a couple of points what is an EPK what consists what an EPK consists of we are also going to talk a little bit about like writing a press release which is an important part of most EPKs how you can share your EPK softwares for creating EPKs and just some general tips So as most people probably already know, like an EPK stands for like your electronic press kit. So I think that the most important thing to remember about an electronic press kit is not about, okay, what exactly needs to be in it? Because I feel like that's different for every artist. Really what you need to remember is you have to be able to tell your story in like a concise, informative and engaging manner. So whatever that means for you as an artist and also like for the audience that you're communicating this to. And as I mentioned before, like when people want to access your EPK, it means you are at a crucial point in the collaboration because they are interested enough to have checked out the press kit you provided and will probably examine it closer than just a normal person browsing because they want to find out more about you and they want to find out if you're the right fit for collaboration. So you need to provide them with the information that they need to navigate that decision in a way that will work in your favor. 
So generally, EPKs can include the following things. So it can include an artist bio or a one sheet. So this would just be like a couple of paragraphs of your bio. You could also include some relevant information about your past work, information about your future plans, social media following and stats. But as I mentioned, like there is no one way that you have to put this together. As I mentioned, the information in it should work in your favor. And of course, promotional photos and listening links to upcoming demos and singles are also really, really important to keep in there. And I think it'll be really helpful to do the EPK clinic later on and share with you guys specifically like where I think improvements can be made. Because one important thing, I think the question I always get asked, for example, when I'm working at Believe and, you know, I, sometimes I have to ask artists for their press kit, for their upcoming releases and things like that. They're always asking me, can you just tell me, like, just give me the answer. What do you need me to include in that? And it's a really hard thing for me to answer because like, I'm not you, like I'm not the, I'm not you as an artist. I don't know your audience. I don't know what you want to do with your music and what specific points of your career or like your business as an artist, you really want to highlight to platforms. But generally, I think you can start with this foundation that I've provided here, but don't try and like cram all the information in just because everyone you've seen other press kits and that's what everyone else is doing. Going back to what I mentioned before, again, it is about how you can best tell your story and you should always keep that at the top of your mind when you're creating or updating your electronic press kit. So I'm just going to also quickly go into how you can write a press release because I think that it's actually very simple. I know that sometimes like hiring a publicist, getting someone to assist you with that, it's not always ideal or it's not always sustainable for independent artists. And actually writing a press release, like a good one, I think it just takes practice and it can be done in a couple of like very simple steps because it really is a formula. So to start, I think when you think about writing a press release, I would say the easiest way to think about it is like you're writing a news article. So the format that you're writing it in should follow the news article format generally, but the direction of it should be changed. The direction of it is not, you know, I'm writing stuff for the wider audience. Your intention is actually to persuade media platforms or partners to write about you or to support you and to really understand what it is that you feel makes your music special or, or makes this project special. So you really need to position this news article in your favor. But the, it, I guess the most, the most difficult part about writing a good press release is that you ideally want to write it in such a way that platforms look at it and they're like, okay, this actually is written pretty well. And maybe we can just copy and paste it and like post it as a blog post or something like that. So that's why it has to have that news article format. But at the same time, you do also need to, you know, have your own best interest at, at heart, because if you don't have those at heart, then who will? And the most ideal situation, I suppose, for a press release is that it's so well written that lots of platforms just take it, they post it. And then lots of people are able to view your music the way that you would like them to view it. So yeah, think about it like a news article and writing a news article in itself, actually, I think it only, it's just three, very, very simple. So basically there is something called the inverted pyramid model. As you can see here, I'm not going to go too much into it, but the general gist of it is the most important information needs to go at the top. So in the title, in the first sentence, actually the first sentence of your news article should be the most, is the most important, all the very valid information that you need should appear in this sentence. And then everything, all the, inform, all the other information should go down in decreasing importance from there on. So for in the context of music, then the title and the first sentence, I think they should basically be reiterating the same information, but maybe in different ways. Maybe the title is a bit more concise than the first sentence. But then after that, for example, if it's about a release, then maybe you can include information about the collaborators of that release because it might be a news point that uh, media platforms might be looking for. And then you can include some information about maybe yourself as an artist, and then at the very end, you can include the less important information, like maybe more background information about you as an artist that platforms might have, have already known about. 
And then, of course, at the very end, include information about how they can find your single or listen to your single or find out more about this project. So that was a very general and quick summary of how to write a press release. And if you guys would like more information about that, uh, definitely we can discuss it in the Q&A. So I think another thing about EP case is I feel the sharing aspect of it is also very important because a lot of times I feel that you want to make it shareable and making it shareable is not really trying to benefit the person you're passing it to, although that might be a byproduct of it. But actually, I want you to make sure that your EPK is shareable in the right way so that, first of all, it's easy for you to go back and consistently update it. And second of all, like your message is going to be very, very consistent. So for example, if you don't host it on some kind of like drive or something like that, like you just have a PDF, for example, you share this PDF with someone and then you update that PDF and then you go and share another version of it with someone else, then it's kind of like you're putting out different information which isn't consistent to a lot of partners. Whereas what you could possibly do is instead, when you're sharing your EPK, you could share a Google Drive or you could share a Dropbox folder. And then for every release coming up, you just share the same link. But what's different is the content of that link. So everyone always has the most updated information about you every time they go back to that link, whether it's now, like when you've sent it, or like, you know, in the future, like even two or three months down the road, if, I don't know, editors of platforms are like searching for some information. So that's why I think it should be as accessible as possible. And I think they should also have the following characteristics. So the files themselves need to be like easy, easily duplicable. So don't give people huge files. PDFs are great. And of course, I think the accessibility, like, you know, giving people links and things like that, that also goes into that. EPKs also need to be concise and to the point. They also need to be up to date, as I mentioned before. And last of all, I think they need to align with your brand. So the, these are all like general rules that you can keep in mind when you are like uh, putting together your EPK as well. These are just some general like software suggestions. I think it's pretty basic, but the one tip that I have for creating EPKs is that functionality is very, very important. And don't, tr don't let form or like design overwhelm the function of the EPK. Because like, for example, if you put together a really, really nice EPK on Canva, but you overload it with all of these design elements and it's hard for you to get to, you know, the text parts of it for the next round, for example, your next your next single release, you want to create an EPK again, you come back to this and it's just so hard trying to like navigate and to like access all the different text points and to concisely and consistently like update them that you just give up and you just make another one. And that's like super inefficient. And also like, it's not a consistent vibe for you. So I really suggest to use something like Microsoft Office, like PowerPoint. And actually they do have a free online version. So if even if you don't have the subscription, you can still access it and use it to duplicate your PowerPoints or your decks in like a very, very accessible and very functional way. If you prefer to use Google Slides, that's also something that is an alternative. I don't really recommend Canva for actually creating your PowerPoints on there because I do find that it can get quite messy. So yeah, I do recommend using Canva just to create the design and then maybe you can download those and put it onto like Microsoft Office or something like that. Generally, I think this is the last part. So just some best practices and tips that you can think about when you're doing the EPK. So really think about how you want to convey like your story to your partners. And this can be both general and it can also be specific. So I think the EPK should be created to be very, very buildable. So maybe you can have like a generic version of it. And then, for example, if you want to create one version for your DSPs or like one version for like distribution, another version for media platforms, then you can, you know, add those slides or like hide them as you need and tell these people like why you should, we, we should support your music. So you can definitely do this at a very broad gen general level through your artist bio, how you present your discography, your social media links, and tell your story at a, at a more like general level about like introducing yourself as an artist. But of course, for those DSPs or like for those media platforms, I think it would really be worth it to maybe create extra slides which might target it more towards their interests and sharing with them why they should support you.
another one of my tips is actually, I think it some some people might find it weird because generally it makes sense that you know you should spend time on this thing and really put in a lot of work so that um the you might get like a better rate of success. But I also I actually feel that you shouldn't feel pressured to put too much information or spend too much time on this because. As I mentioned, like it's very hard for me to give one specific like idea of like how an EPK should be done. All I can say is it should tell your story. And also I don't want you to be like demotivated from going back and like updating it very, very consistently. I think being able to update consistently is even more important than spending time on like those design elements and things and having to redo your EPK for every single release. So that's also why I feel that you shouldn't spend too much time on it and you should be concise and to the point. I think I already touched on this point, which is I think you can make it customizable and like buildable. So as I mentioned before, keeping some generic slides while adding some other slides to tailor it, I think that's something that's really smart. And then you can like create different versions of it, which you can which you can share with other partners. And this will allow you to use this EPK in like a very scalable way and also have all that information in one place so that you're ready anytime that you have a partner that reaches out to you, even though you didn't expect it coming. So for example, if there is an advertising deal that they just reached out to you, you're not caught off guard. You have something that you can present to them. You can take some slides out, put some other slides in, and you won't have to start from scratch. So I think that's also why I really feel that the functionality of an EPK and making it accessible and consistent is also really, really important. So that's it from me. I'm not sure if I went over time, but basically I hope that was helpful. Just some uh, general tips and good luck to everyone. Hope you guys enjoyed that little segment about um, electronic press kits. I really went into a lot of detail about um, a lot of the frequently asked questions. Honestly, I get so many questions as a label manager at Believe or even as someone who runs my own media platform. I've seen a lot of EPKs in my day and let me tell you, I know my way in and out of them and all the pitfalls that you could fall into creating them because at the end of the day, one more thing that I wanted to highlight from that whole conversation we had with Mikio Mark about EPKs, you need to think about the long-term consistency of updating this. You need to really change your mindset so that you see this as something that you are willing to engage with in the long term. It's not just about making your EPK pretty and like flashy and like cool so that like for this round of like single releases or whatever, bam, 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 you put it out and then you forget about it. It's not like that because if you're wanting to invest in yourself as an artist in the long term, then you need to see that reflected in the electronic press kit that you are maintaining, that you are updating because it's a very, very important reflection of you to some people who could potentially be really important partners in your progress as an artist. So I hope that was really helpful for you guys. Um, please let me know your feedback and please leave us a review for this podcast if you like it and you want more episodes. The Level Up podcast is brought to you jointly by Blossoming Bridge Creative and Asian Pop Weekly. Be sure to follow on our socials at Asian Pop Weekly and also check out our website if you're looking for more Mandarin or Asian music content. If you like what you're hearing on this podcast, be sure to like, subscribe and follow and we'll see you on the next one.